Hello and welcome everybody to the Reicherstown Sportsplex in Reicherstown, Maryland. I'm David Stearns. Joined alongside me is Mr. Sean Hoppy. What's going on, Hoppy? Not much. You ready? Another, another day in the life. Ready for another game? Absolutely. Yesterday, three to two, Virginia Tech fell to your UMBC Retrievers in a um, interesting contest. Had a moment to talk with Coach Vogelai prior to this game here, and uh, he kind of indulged us on his thoughts of that. Um, Interesting game. I'll keep calling it interesting. 0-0 zero, zero to start uh, after one period of play, and then 2-2 two, two after two, and then a beauty of a game-winning goal from Matt Bloom. My eardrum is still ringing from that, Mr. Hoppy. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. But today, the task at hand is the Montclair State University Red Hawks. And as I talked with Coach Vogelai just a few moments before, Two years ago, we had 9-3, 6-3 scores, both in the favor of your UMBC Retrievers. And then last year, a 4-4 tie back in November, and or I beg your pardon, back in October. And then a 4-2 win up in Montclair in November. So 4-4, 4-2 last year, 9-3, 6-3, two years ago. I asked him, I said, is this going to be a 1-0 or 2-0 game? <laughs> but it is Joseph Fede that will be starting in goal for the Red Hawks. Man, nice flow today. I like it. Oh, thank you. Both of you guys have very nice hair. Hunter Nicolette on the camera again today. Well, your hair is not too bad yourself. Oh, thank you. It's that cheesy comb over. <laughs> uh, UMBC's seen Fede a few times. Uh, mm -hmm. He came in relief. Uh, UMBC's had pretty good success against him. Uh, we'd like to see that continue today. Uh, another thing to look for is how they start out. UMBC has been outscored 8-2 to two in the first period th uh, this year so far. Uh, so we'd obviously like to see a change in that pattern. Mm -hmm. And uh, get off to a good start today. All right. So we got Lindquist and Manning on the back end for the Red Hawks to start. And then up at the front, we have Tempsick, Mertens, and Brandon Person. And now we'll get the starting lineup for your UMBC Retrievers. Here we go. I don't know if we can actually hear him, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll get all excited like he does. Ben Rafferty starting on the back. He's seen quite some time with this team. Three years to be exact. Well, now three years. In his third season. Yep. And joining him back there is Andrew Nairing. Tyler Novielli will be up front on the wing. Mispronounced over the PA system. Uh huh. But Thomas Nearing, we had a good chat with Coach Vogelai about how far this guy has come over the last three years with this team. And we're going to have Zach Tracy rounding out the front. And of course, who else but Johnny Drago starting between the pipes for the Retrievers. So we'll have the anthem in the opening faceoff coming right up, so stay tuned. Well, that orchestra is always in tune. Let's play some hockey. Tonight's starting goaltender is brought to you by Catch-22 Design, the official apparel of the UMBC Retrievers hockey team. Let's check out C22Design.com. Who do we got in goal? 
Well, for Montclair State Redhawks, we got Joseph Fetty uh, coming in to this weekend with an 0-1 record. Uh, looks like an overtime loss, 4.98 goals against average and an 86% save percentage. For UMBC, once again, is Johnny Drago, who comes in now with a 3-3 three three record. Uh, before yesterday, a or with yesterday, 3.18 goals against average and another 92 save percentage. Not too shabby. So, get ready for the opening face-off in this contest. So we slowly, slowly get this one going. I don't know what the delay is. Oh, okay, Tracy's got to put his straps on there. Okay, that's acceptable. I guess we can wait for that. We don't want his bucket falling off or being thrown off and then getting told you're not playing the next game. And here we go! We'll talk about Travis Yoyo in just a few moments' time. As this one is one back to the Red Hawks, and they cleared in. Back to Rafferty. Rafferty up along the far boards. Not out. Novielli couldn't get there in time as it goes back to Drago. Drago setting it up for Andrew Nearing. Back over to Novielli out of his reach, but it comes up top to the point. And it's Lindquist trying to take the shot through the slot. It's loose up front, and a nice poke away by Drago. And it's kept in by the Red Hawks, who try to clear it in deep, but it's bounced off of Thomas Nearing and out into the neutral zone. And Andrew Nearing trying to set it up ahead there for Novielli, who winds up, takes his shot, and it goes out into the protective netting. I don't know if that was deflected out or if it was a clear out. We'll find out where the faceoff is, and that'll pretty much determine it. So, last night, of course, the boys got their first league win in match play. That's pretty good, 1-0 to start off league play. I like that. And so does Coach Vogelein. Goes off into the far or near corner inside of the Red Hawk zone. Cleared up, not out. O'Connor keeps it in there along the back end, down low. Back behind the goal line, behind Fede. And then chasing it, the Red Hawks trying to put it up along the half boards and out, but it's actually going to be the referee that gets in the way of that one. They'll opt to go to the opposite side and pass Devereaux. Devereaux couldn't get a hold of it, so it's kept in at the point. And I believe that's Blumitz working along the far boards. Up to the slot with a shot. And a save by Fede. Coming out through the neutral zone, the Red Hawks with a lead pass ahead, but cut off Colin Devlin to put it up ahead. And he'll get it right back into the near corner of his own zone. And he'll take it behind Drago over to the far corner. And lead pass up ahead, goes past Dan Durante. And it'll be fed through center and deflected in by Prezosi. Prezosi. That's a name. I like it. Devlin, I have it for the Retrievers. Along the near side, Retrievers almost getting caught with too many men on the ice. They had a couple of extra feet on the ice, but the Red Hawks with the possession now as they put it back deep in the Retrievers zone. Drago setting it up for the Captain Yost. Gross Point Park, Michigan native. And he crushes his check, but the puck goes back in the far corner inside the Retrievers zone. Comes along the near side over the hash marks, and DJ Fadler trying to clear it out, but he actually got stopped up there. Brandon Fritz is going to give it a go. He gives it over to Devlin. Devlin being pinched there by Prezosi. Prezosi going to have some trouble and forced to make a move, but the Red Hawks will keep it in tight at the blue line and send it over to the far corner inside the dog zone. And then Prezosi with it now. Preziosi trying to get it. But Nick Yost with a nice little fake around him, taking it off in the far corner. And he'll bring it over to the near side, cutting through next to the net there. Not long short side. Oh, boy. But he does get it up ahead for Fadler, but pop back into the neutral zone by the Red Hawks who will have to duck back into their own zone for just a second and will be cleared up into the neutral zone and the Dogs will have to tag up as it's popped back in by Walsh and I guess they're going to rule that they were offside. So I guess they didn't in fact tag up. 17.30 left here in the first. No score. It's David Stearns with Sean Hoppy. Hoppy, of course, spending five years with this team. You've seen plenty of players come and go in this roster but some consistent names throughout. Coach and I were just reminiscing about uh, the time of Carmack. Oh, and a hard hit there up at the neutral zone. Is that Rafferty was the victim of that? Or no, that's not Rafferty. I'm sorry. That's a 16, not a 15. Got to get used to this white on yellow. That was Mr. Walsh again. A nice hard check down low here. And it's Penrod, but he's going to get caught. Interference is going to be the call. It's going to be Paget instead. All right, so a little mix-up on the numbers, but that's okay. Trying to follow the play down here. The referee obviously saw something else. You know, the three-man system does kind of bother me sometimes. I, I really do wish there were two guys with orange armbands on there, but, well, I guess you can only see so much. And hope that the linesmen will call any majors that they see, but hopefully they stay as disciplined as they were last night for the most part. I don't know if we have our penalty numbers. We'll get to our stat boy on that one, but we're going to have the center toss that on this one on the retriever's side. Last night, UMBC three for four on the kill, uh, holding steady at 75% on the year. Nicely done. Uh, 
down from 89% at the end of last year, but with a new group of guys, they got to take some time to feel out. It's really just the game against Grand Valley holding them down. Uh, other than that, they've killed, uh, I believe it's five out of the last six. Mm -hmm. And let's keep it going tonight. <laughs> and a pad save there initially made by Drago as we go on the Hilton Garden Inn penalty kill. Make your reservations at Hilton.com. If you're in town to check out the dogs live in action, make sure you stay at the Hilton Garden Inn in Owings Mills, Maryland. And the Red Hawks breaking it out through neutral. Lead pass up ahead for Inglis. Inglis will put it deep in there. Drago trying to slow it up. We picked up along the half board. And it'll be Pirovano. Ooh, couldn't get it deep enough, and it's a turnaround clear out by O'Connor, but it only goes out into the neutral zone. It'll be picked up by the Red Hawks, so it doesn't go very far as Linquist is there to pick it up. Setting up along the far wing, and it's set up in the slot with a chance now with the Red Hawks and a save by Drago off of a person shot. Brandon Person, the junior from Brick, I'm assuming New Jersey. Is it safe to say? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice place. Yeah. Keep in there. It's a brick house out here, up top of the point. And the Red Hawks keep it in. Over to the opposite side. Far hash marks over to Pirovano. Back over to the near side with a shot, and Drago making a save off of a Thomas Lindquist shot. Lindquist standing at five foot nine with a, with a blistering shot there. But Drago saw that one through as he lined up perfectly with that one on long, the near post. 38 seconds left on the kill. 15-49 left here in the first nothing-nothing score. Face off one by the Red Hawks, but it is cleared the length of the ice by Zach Tracy. And there to chase is Brian Manning for the Red Hawks. Takes it behind Joseph Fede, the goaltender, the junior, or senior, I beg your pardon, from Lincoln Park. We've seen him over the last few years that the Red Hawks are going to come in offside with 20 seconds left on their man advantage. Yost looks like he's having a little bit of a conversation there with Manning. I think they're talking about the football game. The Ravens defeating the Cowboys 31 to 29. I didn't know who to report in that one. Yeah, I know. It's tough, myself, eh? I just, I just <laughs> don't like any of them. Well, I don't blame you. This one goes all the way over to the near blue line. Not out. Kept in up top by the Red Hawks. Along the half boards near side. Down in the corner. And Colin Devlin taking care of his man. Pinching. And Mertens into the board. And as we go back to five-a-side hockey, Brandon Fritz will take it out along the left wing through the neutral zone inside the Red Hawks zone with a shot and a save by Fede, but the rebound goes off in the corner. Fritz couldn't control that rebound, but it comes up top to Yosu, who will put it down deep. Not deep enough, and it'll be hand-passed. And, yeah, I forgot they start calling that thing. Oh, well. Hand passes in the defensive zone. You know, I, I, I miss those. I miss those. Well, that time it goes, or helps us out. Yeah, it depends on who you ask, I guess. Well, that particular instance. Well, it does, yeah, but if it's you, yes, in this instance, it did help the dogs. <laughs> Good call. Uh, this one comes all the way down towards Drago. 14.45 left here in the first. Nothing, nothing score. And as Coach Vogel, I had mentioned, you know, this team takes a while to kind of turn it up in a game. Last night, of course, nothing, nothing after one. Virginia Tech really took it to him. Brady Kiel with it now. With it along the far boards, along the half boards, up to Dan Durante. And with a centering pass there for Bloom. Bloom trying to beat out his check. So he gets squeezed into the boards by Trevor's end. It looks like they're going to be called on the offsides. Our next broadcast here on the Cross Ice Feed will be October 27th. Delaware Blue Hens will come yes. to town here at the Reisterstown Sportsplex. We will be there for that one. I got a weird look, a look from my wife. Did I cancel that one? Oh, God. I, I guess I just committed to it on the air. Great. So check out our website, crossicefeed.com slash Ustream for the complete schedule. Here's a chance now for the Red Hawks. Couldn't stuff it in along the short side. It was Pirovano. It's going to go over to Sean O'Connor along the left wing as he clears that one into the far corner inside the Red Hawks zone. Dan Durante down there to chase. And down low behind the goal line. And O'Connor trying to pick it up there. Well, the Red Hawks are going to have a chance with it. Trying to clear it out. Not out. And it'll be moved along by O'Connor, far circle, down low, and a chance there, and it just goes wide. I'm not sure who took that shot, but regardless, it comes out in the neutral zone, all the way back in the retriever zone, and Rafferty's going to have to carry it out himself here. And he'll get some support back here, but not in time. It's cleared up along the far boards and picked up by the Red Hawks. Red Hawks coming back into the retriever zone with Inglis. Inglis along the far half boards, down low, into the corner with a point shot that goes high and all the way into the air. They're not going to whistle this one down. It didn't hit anything, surprisingly. And it'll be let out by Novielli. Novielli with a shot right on Fede. Easy stick save as he shovels that one over to the near corner inside the Red Hawks zone. Red Hawks trying to clear. Kept in by Tracy. 
on the far corner, trying to put it down behind the goal line. But it'll be picked up by Daniel Mayer, and it'll be clear up to the blue line and not out. And kept it in nicely at the blue line there. It'll be fed over to the far corner. Zach Tracy trying to get there. Wow, he went in for a check, and the Red Hawks just blasted him right back. But the Dogs still have control inside the Red Hawks zone. They're fighting for it down there is Tracy. Tracy trying to find the puck, but it'll be the Red Hawks that'll find it up along the far wing and out into the neutral zone. Yost along the far blue line, trying to put it in deep. Linesman got in the way there, and it's still inside. Trying to support is Thomas Nehring, but Yosi's getting pushed around there. And another supporter in there. Uh, not sure who that is. Tracy. Who is that mass man? That is Tracy. So he's still out there on the ice. I thought I saw him go off on a change, but I am greatly mistaken. And he'll be chased down. Alec Hanek, who had a goal in last night's game. I believe he had the second goal. Get the 2-1 to one lead. The Retrievers had the lead in that game three times. And Virginia Tech never had a single lead. And it's clear up along the far side of the net. The Retrievers can't seem to bury it home as the Red Hawks are going to lead it out through center. Up ahead here. Now with a shot and a save by Drago coming off the stick of Tempson. And it's cleared up into the neutral zone and out. And this one's actually going to go past everybody. And we'll come back in icing with 11.58 left here in the first. No score. Drago having to make a few saves here. Not the quality of shots that, you know, you'd think he'd be up to the challenge. I mean, I've seen him make some quality saves, especially last night. He had a fantastic glove save when he went in on the windmill. I thought a hip pad, you saw glove, and I stand corrected. You were right. But still... And a nice save there on a low percentage shot along the far circle coming off the stick of Person. And he holds on, no rebound. His rebound control, I like it. He's pretty solid. He's pretty intelligent about it. He knows when and when not to let the rebounds out for anyone to pick up. That's something UMBC's worked on. Last weekend at the showcase, they gave up a lot of goals from what they call the house uh, in between, in the prime scoring area, in between the two face-off dots going out to about the top of the circles. Mm -hmm. And obviously they wanted to clean that up. And uh, you see guys keeping Virginia Tech last night and Montclair so far tonight to the outside. They're keeping them at bay, yeah. And uh, clearing out rebounds that even though Drago doesn't give up many, the ones he does, they're getting rid of. And a shot taken there by Padgett goes off the glove of Fede. Yeah, he's checking his glove. It's still there and it's still working. He's going to get there quicker. And that snapper there as the shot goes right on Drago and the Red Hawks off along the near side. Fed out front and looking for somebody there. It was Tempsik that tried to find someone in the slot, but it's cleared out in the neutral zone. And all the way down the length of the ice, no icing as Penrod puts it in deep into the Red Hawks zone. And the dogs get some fresh legs out there. And it's up to the point. O'Connor winds up, takes a shot, and it gets deflected off along the far half boards. Well, near half boards, I beg your pardon. Still getting used to the fact that we're doing a north-south view here. I wish we had a good area to do this uh, left to right, but Hunter Nicolette doing a fine job on camera with what we have here. As it's fed up front, here comes a chance now for the Red Hawks to shove it. Far side, but Drago holds his own, and now we got some pushing and shoving in front. As it was Bilchuk that came in on that shot. But he'll hold on, and everybody will come to his rescue. Now, we get a little bit of conversation. Let's start up our mics and find out what they're saying. I believe we're going to have a penalty here. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Montclair came in, crashing net, much as we saw Virginia Tech do yesterday. Is it uh, OC and Bilichuk going in? Yes, that looks to be the case. Even it out. I mean, but granted, the fact is, Bilchuk came in jamming away at the glove of Drago as he had it covered, but... O.C. did nothing wrong. He came in at his goaltender's defense. I yeah, mean, I would um, think referees would be a little bit lenient on that, and I think that's what's being argued here by Matt Bloom. They generally are. He's going to say that he never touched them. Really, the reason he's probably calling this penalty is O.C. got his hands up around the face helmet area of uh, Bill Check. But, but you got to do what you got to do to get him out of there, you know? You do, but there's certain parts. There's a lot of emphasis on player safety nowadays, and so yeah. every time... Uh, hands, elbows yeah. come up around the head, they're going to be uh, very right. wary of Well, that. that's where the advent of the head contact penalties came about a few years back. Not, what is that? Not even three, four years ago. So, yeah, they're starting to enforce it. I mean, with the concussions in this game now, you know, in any sport, really, I guess better safe than sorry. So, you do have a good point there. Rafferty along the far side over to Andrew Naring. Naring. And clearing it directly in on Fede, who's forced to make a save. And in the process, he'll kick it out of play with 10.29 left here in the first. So, minors aside, do Bilchik and O'Connor. 
That'll be 137. We'll have four on four hockey as we have no score here at the Reisers Town Sportsplex. Like us on Facebook, Cross Ice Feed. And if you want our services, go ahead and send us an email. Contact at crossicefeed.com. And the Red Hawks going to lead a breakout here through center along the far side. And a hard check there, but ducking away from it and losing a glove in the process is Lieback. Lieback leaving it there for Inglis. Inglis sending it up along the half boards. Lieback was actually going back to get his glove. And he won't get the glove, but the puck's somewhere in that vicinity. Lieback will get his glove back, but the dogs will take it out into the neutral zone. And oh, and Andrew Nering just getting punished there by touching the puck by Dylan Devereaux. He didn't look too pleased about that. And he'll go off and make a change there as it comes up top. Rafferty outside of the Red Hawk zone, looking to regain that zone. So he comes across through center, leaving it there for Bloom. Bloom trying to take that shot, but Philpot got it sticking away. Off in the far corner, Bloom trying to find it. We played up. Ooh, that's Fritz that's setting up there. I'm, I beg your pardon, that's Rafferty that set that pass up over to Yost. Yost trying to get down low into the far corner. Coming up to the front with Bloom with a shot and a save by Fede. And the rebound kicked away, and the Red Hawks will take it out and gingerly put it out into the neutral zone. Now a breakout chance now for Preziosi with a shot that just goes wide to Drago off in the far corner. And Dan Durante trying to chase it down, but it's kept in by Abonza. And it's almost cleared out again, but kept in by Manning with a shot. And it's deflected off into the far corner. Red Hawks getting some chances here, but from some distant shots. And another chance now. Periozzi coming in, trying to put it through. Over to Abunza. Abunza has to go up top to the point again. And a little exchange there with Lindquist, but then eventually the dogs will have it forced out through neutral. And it'll be back to five-a-side hockey in just a few seconds time here as the dogs go deep inside the Red Hawk zone. And it'll be cleared up. And out by the Red Hawks, down the length of the ice, and it's going to go past everybody, but they're going to say the Red Hawks have an advantage. Drago, nicely done, pokes it away from a speedy, speedy Joseph Redman. And it'll be Novielli coming across the line with a shot. I don't know if that went off the side of the net. Did he get contact on that or not? Fede did make a glove save on that. And a chance now, and almost a goal is on the near side. The bar. And Nering did hit some post on that one. Thomas Nering, of course. Is it Thomas? Yeah. yeah. So he's out there. It's out in the slot, and Thomas trying to find it, but the Red Hawks will, and they'll send it out through the neutral zone. A nice check there by Yost. Throwing off the play as the Red Hawks try to break down into the retriever zone. We'll get some fresh legs out there for the dogs. Red Hawks back deep in their own zone with eight minutes to play here in the first. Nothing, nothing score. Lead pass looking for a home run pass up to Person. But instead, it'll be Walsh that'll put it up along the glass. Not out. And the Red Hawks looking for it with a shot. Doesn't make its way through traffic. It goes over to the near circle and down to chase it. It's Fadler, but instead the Red Hawks will have it down to the near corner with Tempsik. Tempsik playing it along over to the far side to Mertens. Mertens trying to dig his way out to the front. And he's having a little trouble there. So we have a dog on him. And it's Brady Keel trying to work with Brandon Fritz. And Fadler will step in and send it along the far board. And the Red Hawks feeding it to the front and Brandon Fritz deflecting it away. But it'll be kept in by the Hawks for a moment. And now Fritz is going to go to the open end where nobody's at except over at the point. The Red Hawks do take that shot. Coming off the stick of Brandon Person. I beg your pardon, it's not Person, it's Trevors. But regardless, it's kept in by the Red Hawks. And we're going to have an offside call as they rule that it just came outside, slightly outside the blue paint with 7-12 to play here in the first. A little bit of a flurry of activity there from the Red Hawks. Peppering Drago there. But they're keeping the shots still to the outside. And it's nothing too dangerous. He can still see the shots through. A lot of low percentage bad angle shots but no need to hit the panic button just yet. And a lot of uh, block shots by UMBC uh, getting in the way. You don't want to screen Drago while you're doing it. Oh, no. But yeah. getting a piece of the shots, take it away from him. You don't allow for a bounce out front with a rebound. Keeping it to the boards. And uh, that's where you want the puck. Delutri putting it back behind the Retriever's goal. Drago setting it up for Andrew Nearing. Nearing misses everybody, and this one will come back in icing with 6.50 to play. And it's interesting you pointed out the rules last night about icing. I never noticed this before, and I should probably read that rule book that you have in the car. Um, I guess it's the size of the King James Bible. But um, the icing rule about the player having to go down to the hash marks in order for them to blow it dead. I, I never knew that that was actually the logical distance where you had to blow the whistle. Well, never they that. do that to avoid you have a long pass come up. Pick up the chance up front, and the Red Hawks come in with a backhand shot. They score. I'm sorry, Hoppy. That just, Wow. That happened real fast. The Red Hawks finally get a close range shot, challenging Drago, and Drago went down to make the save with the glove, but he couldn't get his glove there in time, and I believe it'll be 
Piravano that will get credit for that goal. Well, you could say Drago went down with the glove, but in that scrum beforehand, he lost his blocker and yep. his stick. So it was more reaching out with your bare hand trying to make it. A valiant effort, but at the same time, without your hand, I'd almost rather have the goal go in against than yeah. Drago make the save and break his hand and be out for an True. extended period of time. True. Well, let's see if we can get the call from Jeff Hemmel. So 29 and 2, I believe, were on the assist there. If I heard correctly, but then again, my hearing has been going over the years. But yes, Piravano did get the goal with an assist from Lieback. At the very least. I don't know who the second assist was, so I do apologize. Two. Was it two? Yeah. So it was Philpot. Okay. So Nick Yost back inside of his own zone. He's at 6-10 to play here in the first. The dogs are down one nothing to the Red Hawks. And setting up shop and leading the breakout. Nick Yost. Trying to deliver the pass to Dan Durante, but he's got some traffic up there. Lyback takes his shot and it goes wide. Trying to chase that rebound down. It's the guy that just scored the goal, Piravano. And Nick Yost will outsmart him. And instead, he gets it chopped away from him as he gets around him. Then it'll be Inglis. We'll send it down to Drago. And Devlin will be forced to come back as the Red Hawks do get some fresh legs out on the ice. It's a far reaching pass for Dan Durante. Gets deflected in, no icing. And O'Connor down there to get it in the far, or far corner, or the near corner, I beg your pardon. And he kept him by the dogs up top to OC. Over to Rafferty with a shot. Fitty, they save the rebound. Comes up front, they score! O'Connor. Sean O'Connor getting the goal. I knew that. Okay. With 5.28 left here in the first, it's all tied up at one. So that was a quick little lived lead that the Red Hawks had. And OC working the zone. It all started with him breaking down into the near corner, set it around, and I believe Rafferty kind of helped on that one as well. And he did some instrumental work up top. and. O'Connor bearing it home with 5.28 left here in the first. We're all knotted back up. And walking with a shot and a save by Drago. That blister of a shot. The rebound just goes wide. Kept in up top by the Red Hawks. It'll be Hayden they will keep it in there. The shot coming from the far circle. The Red Hawks trying to gain control here as Rafferty loses his footing. He's lobbying for a penalty, but here comes a chance up front. They score! No! Yes, they do call it a goal. That one looked like it hit the crossbar and it never went in. As it bounced back behind Drago, they're saying it hit the post, never crossing the line, but apparently they're gonna rule this a goal. It never went in. Drago reached behind him, but it never did cross the line when he did so. We can hope that the referees will get together in conference about this. But he already made the call. I don't think he can reverse it after that, I mean, unless all three parties make a decision. But you have no evidence to overturn it at this point. It never, it never went in. I saw it hit like the corner of the post and crossbar. Came down to Drago, and Drago tried to swallow it up. It did not look like it crossed that goal line, and he had plenty of witnesses up front. For those of you watching the broadcast, maybe you can get a video evidence, go back and uh, <laughs> Make the look call. at it and <laughs> let us know on Twitter. We'll call the Toronto, we'll call everywhere. But we do have the video footage. We'll find out who got that goal later because it was quite a flurry of activity up front. It's kind of hard to give credit to a goal that never went in. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there was like three opportunities that I think he was looking at calling it the goal. I think he maybe just jumped expecting it to go in, but 440 left here in the first. Montclair State University regains the lead two to one. Red Hawks looking to break out. Kept in at the blue line by Yost with a shot that gets deflected wide and off into the far corner. Over to the far half boards and it'll be the Red Hawks breaking it out through center. Cleared deep in onto Drago. He sent in by Bilchik, but he'll go off on a change. Hello, Yosti. Comes into the boards, trying to find that puck. Finds it in his feet and sends it along the half boards near side. Oh, and a hard check there. A few feet away from the boards. Being punished for touching the puck is Hunter Penrod. My goodness. As it comes out through the neutral zone, Red Hawks picking it up along their blue line. And trying to move it ahead, but it's actually kept up ahead there by DJ Fadler. Tries to take a shot. All right. Has to chase it off in the far corner, in the near corner. Trying to move it ahead there. He doesn't have any support back there. Well, a late arriving support. But the Red Hawks do clear it out in the neutral zone. And coming back the other way. Pervino with it now. They're taking a shot. Inglis trying to find it through some traffic there. With no deflection on. And it'll go straight into the breadbasket of Gianni Drago. 
3.39 left here in the first. Two to one, Red Hawks. David Sturz with Sean Hoppy and Hunter Nicolette on camera. It's Cross Ice Feed Broadcasting Crew. Check us out at crossicefeed.com if you're not already on our website watching this broadcast. Check out our broadcast schedule at crossicefeed.com slash Ustream. And a nice check there by Brandon Fritz. The guy that likes to rattle the cages out there. Now we're going to have a delayed call against the Red Hawks. Andrew Nering moving ahead along the near wing. I think we're going to get probably a high stick call on Redmond. And maybe another one now yeah. that he just took we'll, down Nering. So we can get two here? Can we get two for the price of one? Nope, just the holding. Just going to give him the holding. Okay, I thought he got a stick up on him in the process, but with 321 left here in the first, we're going to get our first look at the Green Turtle power play for the Retrievers against the Red Hawks. I was just there at the Green Turtle last night. How about that? Yeah. How was it? It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Oh, I okay. had the Cowboy Burger. And I forget what my wife had, but I was too focused on my Cowboy Burger. <laughs> and the faceoff went up to the point and kept in by Yost. And we do have a Red Hawk without a stick. It's Person. So it's worked down low. And with it along the far corner. Who is that? Is that Durante? Sending it up to O'Connor. Back over to Dan Durante. To the front, to the backdoor shot, and a save by Finney. As he gloves that one down. A one-time backdoor chance. It was Yost crashing the net there for that opportunity, but he couldn't bury it home with 302 left here in the first. 142 left on the Green Turtle power play. When you have a guy with no stick on the penalty kill, you want to go after that player and attack him, exploit him if you can. UMBC mm -hmm. kept the puck to the opposite side of him, not yeah. taking advantage of an opportunity they had. Backdoor stuff attempt there, foiled on the first go-around. Dan Durante trying to find it, but instead it'll be the Red Hawks sending it down the length of the ice all the way back to Drago. Drago leaving it there for Captain Yost. Yost up along the far side for O'Connor. O'Connor across the blue line and into Red Hawks territory. Trying to take a shot, does not make its way through. The Red Hawk player in the way. He was, I believe it was Lindquist that got in the way. Red on gray is worse than last night's white on white hmm. in some weird fashion. It, it, at a distance on the sleeve numbers, it's just terrible. One minute left on the power play for the Retrievers. Bloom working it down low, trying to stuff it past Fede as it goes past the net along the short side. Goes off into the near corner. And trying to work it on his backhand. Yost feeding it to the front with a shot. They score! Nearing. Thomas Nearing! Popping it home with 2.05 left here in the first. We're all knotted up at two on a green turtle power play goal. You got to give me a second. You got to give me a second. Trust me when I see a goal. <laughs> well, when you pause, I, I don't. I, I let, the, rather, I let, the, I, I let the people at home cheer first and the crowd noise get into it, and then I go. Uh. <laughs> if I don't know who it is, I'll ask you who was that masked man. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they're all masked. And this one will be an icing with two minutes to play. Just wait till you see this tweet. You're going to like it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sean Hoppy doing the Twitter. Follow UMBC Ice Hockey on Twitter. It's UMBC Ice Hockey. That's the handle. And you can follow us on Twitter, too. Cross Ice Feed is the handle there as well. And also, I guess you could be friends with the hockey team, too. Maryland, Baltimore County Hockey, I believe, is the... Uh, the Facebook friend name, so friend them. If you love UMBC hockey, friend them, will you? We got 148 to play, and the Red Hawks find the puck inside their own zone, sending it high into the air and off the dasher in front of the scorekeeper's box, and this one is not going to make it for icing as Rafferty's back there to pick it up. He gets checked into the boards by person. And it'll be sent along the far half boards over to Novielli. Novielli through center. It'll be picked up by Thomas Nering, who just got the Green Turtle power play goal. It's fed over to Novielli along the far side. And it'll be Rafferty that'll pinch in to keep it active for the dogs inside the Red Hawk zone, but he has his pocket pick. And it'll be played by Tempsik. Tempsik looking for the option along the near wing. And it'll be sent down the length of the ice. No icing again as they're ruling that Andrew Nairing was there to play it. With 1.10 to go here in the first. 2-2 two -two score. And back and forth action. The dogs have not had a lead in this game. Montclair has had the lead twice. As it comes up front and a chance there to stuff home. It's blocked by Fede and the Red Hawks defense. Coming back the other way with it is Piravano. Piravano with a shot and a safety score! Oh boy! The Red Hawks getting the third lead in this game with 52.7 seconds left in the first period. And this time it was Nick Lieback that gunned that one home with the help of Michael Piravano. 
That one's an unlucky break for Drago. He made the save, but he made it with the handle of the stick. And you can't really control where a rebound goes on that. It happened to mm. just go straight down, sit right behind him, didn't see it. Easy uh, tap-in goal for Lieback. Uh, UMBC needs to find a way to not be trailing. That'd be yeah, the ideal. I'd say so. I got a little excited on that one because it just happened. It was a perfect play for Montclair. It was a perfect setup, and it was just a real nice goal. As Drago's without a stick, it looked like he broke his stick when he tried to get the puck along the boards. 40 seconds left here in the first. Another broken stick. The one without the twig this time is Fritz. And somebody, well, yeah, no, he does have a stick. Drago does have a stick now. Uh, actually, I might have had the incorrect player. I think Fritz may have given him the stick, but then somebody else broke their stick. My God, there's so much down timber out there. It's not even funny. Brazilian rainforest out there. And now the Red Hawks moving it through center with less than 20 to play here in the first. Sticked out of the air. No high stick by Yost as it was just below his shoulders. Back to Devlin. Devlin along the far wing. Trying to hook up there with Hannock, but it's going to be sent up along the glass and out. As Yost will pick it up in the neutral zone. Back into his own zone with five seconds to play. Devlin looking for a last second chance here. But that'll do it for the first period of play. Montclair State University is up on your UMBC Retrievers with a score of 3-2. to two. Lieback is the story of this one so far as he has the go-ahead goal with 52.7 seconds left in that opening frame. So we'll get you some stats on some shots here in just a few moments' time. So stay tuned. It's Retrievers Hockey here on Cross Ice Feed as the Red Hawks are up on your dogs 3-2 to two after one period. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome everybody back to the Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland, home of the UMBC Retrievers who are down 3-2 to two to the Montclair State University Red Hawks. And in my mind, they're actually tied at two. They're tied at two. In the video camera's mind, yes, they're tied the, at two. They are. We went through and um, unfortunately our referee, whose name will go unmentioned, and namely because I don't know his name, uh, he was wrong. He was wrong, folks. We found uh, that there is conclusive evidence that it never crossed the goal line. So, great job, Hunter Nicolette. We're going to give him credit as our video uh, goal judge. But unfortunately, the referee did not consult with him and the faceoff had already taken place. Shame, 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 shame. So, regardless, we carry on here. 40 more minutes to go, so plenty of hockey left. Uh, Coach Vogel, I, I talked to him uh, in between the periods, and obviously he's full of colorful language because, you know, he's a colorful guy. Uh, he did say that, um, you know, he's not worried. He's not very worried at all. So he's like, we're not allowing any more goals. So we're going to hold him to that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got that personality, I tell you. The Red Hawks back inside their own zone. Real deep. They try to move it along and out, but it's kept in by Dan Durante, who puts it back behind the goal line for O'Connor. O'Connor in trouble with the pass there, but it goes over to Bloom. Back over to O'Connor, far post. And it's going to be O'Connor up top. It's Andrew Nearing back over to O'Connor, half boards, far side. Down low to Dan Durante. Durante looking for Bloom to get some support there, but instead it'll be the Red Hawks walking out with it. So we are five aside to start this frame. I know it's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we five on five? Yes, we are. So I've, I've gotten used to a few games where it's just like every period started with a man advantage for somebody. But through center, the Retrievers trying to break it back into the Red Hawks zone. It's out of the reach of O'Connor. The Red Hawks will clear back the other way. And Bloom has his pocket pick. And it'll be Inglis walking in. Inglis getting a return pass. He scores. 19.04. That was not Inglis. We'll get the number on that guy. He's probably the tallest guy on their team that popped at home on a return pass. I believe Tempsick on that. 1904 left here in the second. It's a two goal game. And how about that? It is number 27, Pirovano, who gets his second goal in this game. Four to two, Red Hawks. We'll get the official call if we can from Mr. Jeff Hemmer. Okay, we can't hear him. All right, so anyway, back inside the Red Hawks zone. Tracy to the front, trying to find yeah. Hunter. He scores! Zach Tracy pops at home and immediately answers the Red Hawks goal. And the dogs are down only by one. That was a great job forechecking by Tracy. He comes in, he was probably behind the play. Gets in there, gets a body on the defense and wins the puck. Sends it out front to Naring, who couldn't get a stick on it, so instead he uh, does a little soccer play, a little one-touch kick pass back over to Tracy, and Fetty uh, didn't read it well. And basically a wide open net for Tracy. 
Well, I joked with Coach Vogelai about the fact that, hey, are we looking at a 2 nothing game? No. It's going to turn into that 9-3 game? No. It looks like it's going to turn into something a lot bigger than that. But here comes a chance now for the Red Hawks with a backhand shot. A great save by Drago. Putting a paddle down. Last second there. As he's foiled. Preziosi. Going to be kept in by the Red Hawks down low. But it'll be played by Yost up along the far boards. And through center down the length of the ice. No icing. It'll be picked up by the Red Hawks. Daniel Mayer. And along the near side and out. And it'll be Preziosi. Getting checked almost into <laughs> the dog's bench. As the ooze came from the bench. And a check there by Novielli. Going into his man, Mayer. And it'll be kept in by Fadler for the moment. And Redmond will actually put it up through center over to Preziosi, who chips it over to Redmond along the far blue line and into the retriever zone. Redmond having a little trouble there. He feeds it out to the front, up top to the point, and a shot, and they score! David Lurin taking the shot from the top of the slot. It's 5-3, to three, Red Hawks. This one's turning into a burn burner. Oh, good gravy. Well, Montclair just answering back immediately after the Tracy goal, and Tracy's goal was a response to the Piravano goal. We're, we're only 17.52 left here in a second, and we've already seen three goals. Incredible. And Lauren just came onto the ice from a change. He had no business being where he was. Well, we talked about earlier UMBC blocking shots when not wanting to screen Drago. Rafferty tried blocking that shot, but wound up just screening Drago. Uh, unfortunate play. Uh, hope UMBC can respond similar to what they did earlier in the game. And Fadler tried to get the puck, but Lauren will actually put it in deep. And he's the reason why they're up by two. The Red Hawks, that is. And now it's Fritz along the far boards. He can't control the puck there as it sent over to Lindquist. Fritzy better be careful there. He actually got a good solid chop on the arms of Lindquist. He goes ahead along the near wing inside the dog zone. Fadler back there to pick it up. Fadler behind his own goal line. Going to get up along the near wing and backhand it out through center. Fritz doing a little shadow work as he challenges Philpott. And this one's sent down the length of the ice. No icing. And back there to retrieve it is Sean Walsh. Walsh trying to clear it up and out. He does so and Red Hawks will have to tag up on the offside and they do so. As the puck's deep behind Drago. Having trouble with it back there. I think that's Walsh that sets it up along the, the near wing. Dan Durante, cross ice feed over to Bloom. Bloom, top of the slot, takes a shot and it goes off in the near corner. Bloom picking up his rebound. And he chipped away, but up top to Rafferty. Rafferty taking a shot, a great glove save by Fede as Dan Durante was looking for the rebound to stuff home. No rebound coming as that one went directly into the glove. Oh, Joseph Fede, 16-25 left here in a second. 5-3 Montclair State University. David Stearns with Sean Hoppy, and Hunter Nicolette on camera for the Cross Ice Feed broadcasting crew here at the Reicherstown Sportsplex, home of the UMBC Retrievers. Point shot from Andrew Nearing, goes into the stick of Fede and goes wide. And Durante, far blue line, keeping it in. They have to fight to keep it in as the Red Hawks do find it, but it's wrangled away by Matt Bloom, but eventually it's poked away by Piravana. And he's dumped right back in deep into the Red Hawks zone along the near corner. And picking it up is Mayer. Mayer along the opposite corner, along the half boards over to Lieback. Lieback has a goal in this game as he sends it down the length of the ice. This one will come back in icing as they rule that Rafferty would get there first. Just under 16 minutes to go here in the second period. Check us out on Facebook. We do have a Facebook page, Cross Ice Feed, and also Twitter. Follow us, Cross Ice Feed, and also follow UMBC Ice Hockey. That is it. UMBC Ice Hockey on Twitter. Get all the updates. Mr. Hoppy plugs in there. Does a fine job keeping everyone up to date if you really can't understand my babble. Lie back along the, the near wing. Coming in. Andre go with a shot. It goes right into the logo, and he holds on with no rebound coming. A lot of stoppages here, and mostly because we've just seen three goals in this period alone. One thing we saw in that last play was the back check for UMBC from the forwards isn't quite up to par with what Coach Vogel is going to want. Uh, just a, not a bad play by Rafferty at the point, but a turnover at the point. Uh, and no one really coming back you know, from a forwards perspective to get a trailer to help with the manpower disadvantage when they come in on a three on two. We've already seen a couple odd man rushes go Montclair's way where they buried the third goal or the fourth goal yeah. right here in the period. 
There's been plenty. We're up to eight goals in this game so far. And Penrod putting it up through center, but picked up by Redmond. Redmond trying to work his way across the line. He gets a little backup support there by Abunza. And it's chipped up along the blue line and out. The retriever's trying to break out the other way and set up some offense, but the Red Hawks cleared out into the neutral zone. The retrievers had to tag up, but Puck's already up at the red line. Trapped up along the boards. We got Stan Durante that's doing some leg work. I beg your pardon, it's uh, Devlin, Colin Devlin. The eight versus the nine, but we're going to call a hand pass here and get yet another stoppage. So we had a stoppage pace of like every 30 to 45 seconds. Be a long night that way. Oh, yes, indeedy. I got to work in the morning. <laughs> I got class. Oh, yes, you do. You've got plenty of class, Mr. Hoppy. Color commentating class. Oh, yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah, classy fella. Face off. Over along the left side of Drago's. This one goes right on. He has to make the save as it goes off to the near corner. Trying to work for it now. Down low is Tracy. Tracy trying to pin his man up along the boards, but instead it will be helped along and out. The dogs break inside of the Red Hawk zone with Thomas Nearing taking a shot towards the net. Tyler Novielli putting it up front of the slot. Nobody there to bang it home. Zach Tracy was in the vicinity, but not close enough. Brady Keel back at his blue line. Brady Keel putting along the far side of the blue line. And a lead pass here. Thomas Nearing trying to work it with Novielli. Novielli couldn't handle that pass. Novielli getting checked, but still on his feet, still has the puck. Trying to get it around Philpot. Philpot will put it on his backhand around to Lauren. Lauren trying to clear it up, but not out. Kept in by Matt Kelly. And Kelly had it moved up to the front. Novielli tried to take a shot, but instead it'll be sent down the length of the ice. No icing they're going to rule here. And it looked like Philpot was waiting for that icing you know, to bring a faceoff back here, but he's in fine position now for the Red Hawks. Is coming across the line is Yost. Yost getting clocked there up high as he came in and got totally demolished. I don't know. That, that hit seemed a little high to me, but you know, we'll let it go, I guess. 13.45 left here in the second. 5-3 Red Hawks. Retrievers trying to clear it out in the neutral zone. And a second effort there by Dan Durante. We'll get it up ahead there on the wing. Too far for Zach Tracy. We clear up along the glass and out. Off the stick of Robert Hayden. And Yost back in his own zone. Far corner. Being shadowed there by Person. And that's just not any person. That's Brandon Person. And a lead pass here now for Bloom. Picking up speed. Coming to the outside. Cutting and taking a shot. And a blocker saved by Fady. The rebound comes up to the near circle. And up top for the Red Hawks to break out with Mertens. Setting up a pass ahead there. I believe it's Enright who takes his shot. And it's saved by Drago. It goes off on the near side half boards inside the retriever zone. Retriever's looking to break it out. Right across the blue line and being tripped up. Matt Bloom does get tripped up and the Red Hawks will sit down a man and as soon as they get the puck here, and it'll be touched up by Trevor's back in his own zone. And it looks like we're gonna go back on the Green Turtle power play. If I'm not mistaken, they're already one for one. So 100% right now, you know, look to go Keep that streak alive and go two for two. So 12.53 left here in a second. Green Turtle Power Play. Visit them at 2 Restaurant Park Drive in Owings Mills. And if you come to the games, you can get $5 off any meal with your ticket stub. Offer expires December 31st, 2012. Here's a wraparound chance. And stuff up front. Fady making a save. And it's John Luke trying to stuff it home. We kept in along the near side blue line by Tracy. Tracy up at the top of the circle, down low over to Fadler. Fadler looking for options. Fadler turning, curling back over to the near corner, up top, back to Tracy. Tracy working it over to the opposite side. And it's Rafferty putting along for Thomas Nairn. Nairn, or is that, is that uh, Novielli? Novielli? I beg your pardon. They both look alike. <laughs> They're tall. Novielli, far side, over to the near side of Tracy. Tracy couldn't handle that pass, it was airborne. But he does settle it down along the hash marks near side. Working his way to the top of the circle, takes a shot and it was blocked by English. Fadler with it again, up top to the point to Rafferty. Rafferty doesn't have a lane, gives it over to Tracy. Through, over to the back door, with a shot, he scores! Tyler Novielli, oh, Ravioli gate gravy, it's a 5-4 score, they're only down by one. It's another Green Turtle power play goal. They go two for two. Oh my goodness. That was the tightest corner shot you could have ever asked for. Oh baby. Just inside the far post on the near side here. Tyler Novielli slamming home the second power play goal of two chances for the Retrievers. And the Retrievers are gonna go down a man. And then we get a high sticking call. 
And Albert Abunza getting the stick up high. So just like that, the momentum can shift back the other way. And as the retrievers will go down a man as Matt Bloom will sit for two or more. We'll see what goes up on the clock. Not sure the extent of the damages to Abunza, but yes, we only have two minutes up there. So just after getting their second of two opportunities on the power play, the Green Turtle power play, we're going to Hilton Gardens in. Penalty kill. Check them out. Go on to Hilton.com and book your room today if you're in town to see your dogs live here at the Reisterstown Sportsplex, just down the road in Owings Mills, Maryland. Hilton Garden Inn. It's a huge kill for the dogs. Uh, you've seen a lot, a lot this game where they score a goal and then they have a sort of lull and let uh, Montclair right back score another. Oh, Ding fries are done off the crossbar. Another shot. Oh, baby. So this is critical for UMBC to get this killed off, build back some more momentum of their own, and hopefully tie this game up. Yeah, they're doing some aggressive forechecking here on the penalty kills. Lieback's quarterbacking this one up top, and it does go behind Lieback and out in the neutral zone. And we're going to have a penalty against the Red Hawks. That eliminates the man advantage for the Red Hawks. 113 remains on Bloom's penalty. So just like that, we'll have a slightly abbreviated power play on the other side for the Retrievers with 11.04 left here in the second. 5-4, Montclair leading in this one. Lots of activity in this, in this game. Uh, <laughs> Four goals in this period alone, and we're not even halfway done with it. Oh, we had five in the first, so. Yeah, and with their two for two on the power play, that's the story of this game so far for the UMBC side. The face-off to the right of Joseph Fede. And trying to put it down low is Tracy, but he's foiled there by Lindquist, who puts it up along the near side. Curling back, Pirovano back over to the far wing. Up ahead for Inglis. Inglis being shadowed by Tracy. Takes a bad angle shot saved by Drago. The rebound kicked around up front. Trying to move it out. I believe that's O'Connor that's trying to race for it. And I see an assistant captain. So, yeah, it is O'Connor. But here's a shot from the Red Hawks going above the cage just wide of Drago. Red Hawks controlling the momentum inside their zone with 10 and a half to play here in a second. 38 seconds left on a four on four. The Red Hawks. Controlling it now. I don't think the retrievers realize that it's even strength right now. But it comes down low, trying to stuff it home. Drago making a save as he comes sliding across the crease. What a fine job holding off the Red Hawks, but you need to see the retrievers get a little bit more aggressive here as there's 20 ticks left until they go on a short power play. And it's O'Connor now. He didn't get ahead there. And a backhand try by Zach Tracy, who had it just on the tip of his blade, but it went wide. And the Red Hawks will break out of their own zone. Pirovano along the near side, coming across the dog's line. They're going to get ahead over to the far wing to Lindquist. Lindquist gets checked to the boards, but Piravano had it for just a second. And we'll have a 45-second power play. Another green turtle power play here. Let's see if they can make it three for three. Even though it's kind of abbreviated, I guess it goes, you know, in that column of power play. So let's see if they can do something here. Up ahead, Dan Durante gaining speed along the near wing. Centering it up for Bloom with a shot. Fetting to save the rebound. Comes up front. Bloom with a backhand shot. And Fede will prevent any rebound on that second try and holds on for the faceoff with 24 seconds left on the power play. Good rush right there. And I have to say, for the first time in my five years here, Dan Durante outskated <laughs> someone and built up speed, skating away from people in the neutral zone. Usually a little bit of the opposite way around. You haven't taught him to get the lead out of his skates? Ah. Oh. Is it in his skates or in his pants? I'm trying to figure out there's lead there somewhere. <laughs> Probably all over. And this one comes outside of the Red Hawk zone with 15 seconds left on the man advantage. Yost dumps it deep inside the Red Hawk zone over to the near corner. Running near boards for Bloom with a little support from Dan Durante. Up top to the point to Yost. Four seconds left on the power play. Yost trying to get a shot through, but he gets a little stutter step there by Redman and loses the puck in the process. But back down to Chase. It's Dan Durante to get it, but instead Redmond will lead the pass up ahead for Lieback. Up through center for Preziosi. We're back to five-a-side hockey. Preziosi leading over to Redmond. Redmond with a shot and a save by Drago. The rebound. Drago's down on the ice, and we're going to have another call here, and it's going to go against the Retrievers. 8.45 left here in a second. They're going to go back on the Hilton. Garden in. Penalty kill. Penalty oh, they're calling shot. a penalty shot instead. Oh, boy. 8.42 left here in a second. I guess Leo's coming in on the back check there. Hauled uh, him down. Two on one. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a good diving play, but unfortunately got more man than puck. And we're going to have a penalty shot up here for Montclair. We'll see who gets to take it. Obviously, whoever's taking it does uh, add sure. a little bit of. Yeah. Well, it, it, you, don't, you don't choose. It, it's usually the guy that was you know pretty much impeded on that. So I think it might have been Redmond. So... 
Or, no, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. It was not Redmond, it was uh, Preziosi. Preziosi was the second guy in on that two-on-one with Redmond. So let's see what he can do. Preziosi, a Division Three NCAA transfer from UMass Boston here for uh, Good Montclair, one of their probably one of their best players. So we'll see uh, as Drago is probably one of the best for UMBC. It's gonna be put to uh, the test. Their best against our best. Well, let's see what he does. Let's get it on. This is a difference of continuing five to four Red Hawks lead or a six to four two goal lead. We've had a two goal lead in this game already. So let's see if they open up the scoring again on a Preziosi penalty shot. Preziosi takes the puck at center. Goes wide across the blue line. Off to the far circle, comes in for him. Backhand shot, he scores! Preziosi on the penalty shot. Beats Drago above the blocker side pad. Just like that, the two goal lead is back in place for the Red Hawks, six to four. This one is definitely turning into a barn burner. 10 goals halfway through this game. And that is the first time since Drago has been here that he's been beaten either on a penalty shot or shootout attempt. Uh, obviously been a strong point of his. Uh, just couldn't quite get it there that time. Getting beat far side. And well, now the retriever is going to look to answer back as Fritz taking it along the near side. Down low, but he has his pocket pick. Lie back there to support for the Red Hawks. Up ahead there for Piravano. Piravano across the blue line to the retriever zone. Has a few to beat, but he picks up the puck along the far half boards. Far corner, leading it up top. And with it now, Philpot with a shot and sending it down low wide. And it looks like the net is going to be off, and we're going to get that stoppage with 8.16 to play here in a second. 6-4 Red Hawks, David Stearns with Sean Hoppy and Hunter Nicolette on camera with the cross ice feed broadcasting crew. If you're interested in our services, contact us at contact at crossicefeed.com. You can also check us out on Facebook. Look up our page, Cross Ice Feed. Give us a thumbs up. Say we're doing a fine job. Or just give us a thumbs up, just for the hell of it. Off in the far corner, inside the retriever zone. Retriever's trying to gain possession of the puck. Red Hawks buzzing all over them. Like a flock of Red Hawks. And up along the half boards, far side with a bad angle shot that just goes wide off the stick of Devereaux. Along the half boards. And over to the near side of Phil Pot, putting it deep. I believe that's... That is number 18, and he's got a jersey tuck going on there. It is Mertens, trying to go with the Gretzky look. And usually it's kind of a half tuck, but I guess he's going to go for the full back tuck. But Red Hawks trying to get some changes here while the puck is under a few bodies there. Mertens trying to try, tie up the dog player on him, and that was Andrew Nairing, but... <coughs> Excuse me. As now the Retrievers break out into the neutral zone with a shot right into the glove of Fede, and he'll hold on as DJ Fadler comes in pressuring with two red hawks ahead of him. They'll blow the whistle to get the stop to the face off to the left of Fede with seven and a quarter left here in a second. 6-4 red hawks. Preziosi's penalty shot goal over Drago's blocker side makes it a two-goal lead for them yet again. There's Novielli on the half boards near side, working his way behind the goal. He gets checked into the boards and loses the puck, has his pocket picked by Abunza, but it's kept in the far blue line by Brady Kill, putting it deep down there for Novielli. Novielli, a little battle for the puck. He's pinned up along the board, set free there by Zach Tracy. Tracy back over to Novielli. Novielli looking for somebody open, but instead it'll be picked up by Preziosi and sent out into the neutral zone over to Redmond along the far wing. We have a delayed call against the Retrievers as Drago makes a save. The rebound comes up top to the blue line, sent down deep. And then the Retrievers trying to get there. They don't have possession of it just yet. And now they'll touch it up and we'll get the call. And it is a high sticking call with 6.47 left here in a second. Another Hilton Garden in penalty kill. Here's a guilty party is Zach Tracy on that one. As I assume it occurred, I didn't see it on the play leading out. He was coming in on the back check, uh, gave a little rub off to Preziosi when he passed the puck off and just happened to have his stick up in the air, clipped him in the uh, bubble. Oh boy. Kept up top by Lindquist on the far blue line, back up to the blue line, not out. Oh, and Lindquist gets bowled over. And a short-handed try there, and it's just foiled as it goes out of the reach of Sean O'Connor. And I'm buzzing around in the neutral zone. The dogs are barking here as they have Matt Bloom popping into the Red Hawks zone. Nice physical check there by Nick Yost, pitching up into the play. 
You don't want to leave one guy to fend for himself down there. Back deep in the retrieval zone. Now we got some shoving along the far blue line. And a lot, everybody's getting their fists up here. Not sure what instigated that whole thing, but maybe Hoppy could shine some light on this. Well, Yost came in. Retriever's playing very aggressive, and then Nuch is on the penalty kill, trying to throw some hits on some Montclair players. Uh, Yost was down, having covered the puck, and that's what caused the whistle. Then Piravano, I believe 27, yeah, yep, uh, came in, gave uh, Yost a little cross check right up around the face. That should be the only penalty, I believe, out of this. We'll see what happens. So it looks like we'll be balancing things out here. 133 left on the high sticking call to Tracy, and. Uh, Looks like boarding was the call. And only two minutes. That's the so only call yet. Caravano will sit for two. And he'll balance things out. Yossi was getting yelled at by Coach Vogelai. Getting screamed at to back away because he knew that the advantage was in the retriever's favor. And he just didn't want anything to uh, match that and turn into a four on three of anything. Well, as you talked about yesterday, Yost logs probably 35 to 45 minutes a game. Oh, yeah. And if he takes a couple penalties like that, gets tossed out of the game, that's a big loss for the retrievers. Mm -hmm. So it was a good job by him to stay disciplined and uh, walk away from that. Yep. And we'll see what we can get out of this. O'Connor with it along the far blue line, setting up down low for Rafferty. Rafferty winds up, takes a shot, trying to get the backdoor chance from Bloom. But it goes wide of everybody and out into the neutral zone. Brandon Person chasing it down, taking a shot, and it just goes wide of Drago. Comes all the way up to the blue line near side, not out, kept in by Lindquist. Back deep, Retriever's looking to break out. Lindquist will pick it up at the red line as it's cleared out by the Dogs. So 104 left until we get into a very short 20-second just about power play for the Retrievers. They are two for three this evening. And it's O'Connor along the far side. O'Connor looking, takes a shot, and it goes wide of fitting. Yeah, that one was a laser. And Rafferty with a blind pass there gets picked up by Person. And he'll zigzag and send it over to the opposite side to Manning, who will clear it in, and the Red Hawks will get some changes. And now the Retrievers are going to lead the breakout up ahead with a lead pass to O'Connor that goes out of his reach, and we're going to get an icing. So 5.17 left here in a second. Red Hawks are up on your retriever, 6-4. to four. 29 seconds left on Tracy's penalty, and we'll have a short power play. Four. Your dogs. Our next broadcast will be here at the Racers Town Sportsplex. We'll be against the Delaware Blue Hens. Tune in. And that game will be Saturday, October 27th, once again, at 4.30. And a 5.08 left here in the second period as this one goes right into Drago. As I said, Red Hawks with a two-goal lead. They've had a two-goal lead, I know, I'd say two or three times in this game, if I remember correctly. And once again, as we remind you, last night was the homecoming game. Band was here and everything. They defeated the Virginia Tech Hokies in an exciting contest, 3-2. to two. And even though the dogs are outshot 35 to 26, they still walked away with the uh, victory. And today they're looking to gain their footing again. And try to keep that momentum from last night's win going here, but they're in a little bit of a hole. And this one goes deep behind Fede. Novielli in there first, trying to find the puck as he gives it over. So Thomas Nearing with a pass up front to Zach Tracy. Comes up top for Yost. Yost trying to take a shot, does not get it through Philpot. And it's bumped down to the neutral zone. And speaking of bumping, Novielli bumps into his man up in the neutral zone. And this one's cleared down the length of the ice. No icing. So we got seven seconds left on the man advantage. And now coming back the other way, Novielli moving it up ahead for the backhand pass from Tracy. Novielli with a shot and a save by Fede. And the rebound comes up to the high slot. And it'll be pushed out by the Red Hawks as we're back to five-a-side hockey with 4.15 to play in a second. And making a dive down, I believe it was Preziosi. I don't know if he was trying to draw a penalty or what. Maybe Probably what he was trying to do, but the ref saw right through it. He just kind of flopped. Yeah. Looking uh, a little bit like a soccer player. Or a Michael uh, Phelps. I mean, it was a good dive. I mean, it just dove right into the pool and just swam along into the corner. And well, unfortunately, he didn't get gold. Yeah, this water's frozen. Not going to work out too well. Yeah. The pool's about, what, 20 miles that way? 15 miles that way? <laughs> a while. Just about. Well, I guess they are oh, going to give him the penalty on that. Okay. So, I, I guess the dive on top of that. <laughs> no? I tried. We'll find out the call. So, Colin Devlin was set for two on that hook. 
And there it comes up. High stick. Or high stick, I beg your pardon. And now the shot taken by the Red Hawks does not make its way through the traffic. There's plenty of dogs up front. Shell. And it'll be taken with a point shot from the Red Hawks that's blocked and sent down the length of the ice. No, no, it does not make its way past Lindquist. We kept it up at the red line, and the Red Hawks will bounce their way back into the retriever zone. Lindquist keeping it up tight at the blue line and along the half boards, near side, and working his way to the slot. Inglis, Inglis looking for a lane. He doesn't find it. He goes over to the far circle. Inglis up top, fakes a shot, sends it down low. It's deflected behind the cage. I believe that's Piravano down there with it. Sent up top to Inglis with a shot, and he breaks his stick in the process. And the Retriever's trying to take advantage of this. Lieback has it off in the near corner, working his way behind the cage, looking for an option, sends it up top, back to Inglis. Inglis, a new twig out there. And with the shot that goes through the traffic, Drago makes a save the rebound. Well, it's underneath them, and we got a lot of pushing and shoving as uh, we're charging the net there is a little crash on the net. Get anywhere near that net. You're going to get some punishment. 55 seconds left on the Hilton Gardens end. Penalty kill. 3.03 left here in the second. 6-4, to four, Red Hawks in the lead at the Racerstown Sportsplex. So rumor has it Stevenson University is going to get a D3 uh, hockey team in here. And uh, hopefully you know, put a little money in like UMBC has and get some... You know, get a press box or something for us. That'd be nice. They're building scaffolding. Yes, I like it. Good. You get an elevated view. Here comes Matt Bloom across the Red Hawks line. Short-handed try. Bloom to the front. And a chance. O'Connor back to Bloom. O'Connor off in the far corner. Still has it. Just sends it to the front. Nobody there to pick it up. And the Red Hawks will break out the other way. Sent up along the far wing over to Redmond. Redmond along the hash marks far side. Redmond back into the far corner. Going deep behind the goal. Over to the near side, trying to set that pass up top to Manning, but the referee got in the way, and with the help of the referee, O'Connor has it now, and he'll just dump it in ever so nicely with 15 seconds left on the penalty kill. And the Red Hawks looking for one last burst here. Can't get it past Tracy. Tracy and O'Connor working along the far boards inside the neutral zone. Back to Rafferty. Rafferty will send it off into the far corner of the Red Hawks zone, and that'll just about do it for that penalty kill. Devlin will go back to the bench. 2.05 left here in the second. Retrievers looking to close the gap here as they're down by two. Tracy with a shot and a high glove save by Fede. And the Red Hawks flock in there and make sure that Tracy doesn't do any further damage on their tender. Two minutes left here in the second. There Maybe we'll get some 5 on 5 hockey <laughs> for the first time in a while. Hey, that'd be nice. <laughs> Plenty as of goals in the UMBC seems to... Yep. Obviously better on their power play, but uh, 5 on 5 seem to be doing a lot better than constantly having to kill off penalties, and that mm -hmm. takes away some of the better players' legs. And then Montclair builds up all his offensive momentum. The Retrievers currently trapped inside their own zone. So it comes along over to the near side. And Novielli couldn't handle the pass. It comes up top, and it'll be fed out by Thomas Nary. Nary. And we get down there for Tracy. Tracy with a backhand to the front, but it actually goes off the side of that. Tracy will get it back and return pass. Up to the front with a shot, it just goes wide. Tyler Novielli missing the far side of the net. Goes off to the far half boards. And the Red Hawks with Hayden over to the near side. Over to Trevor's back over to Hayden along the far corner. And goes along the half boards over to Lurin. And then we'll switch place, and Hayden will get crunched into the boards there by Zach Tracy. This one goes all the way down to Drago with 105 left here in a second. Red Hawks, Lauren putting it right back in the retriever zone. The Red Hawks got a tag back up here, so we got a minute to go. Retrievers with a home run pass, trying to get it through, but it's actually caught up by Devereaux. Devereaux across the retriever's line. Devereaux losing control of it. And the pass through center, mishandled there by Bloom, and the Red Hawks will take it back the other way. Lieback trying to get deep into the retriever zone, but it'll be Bloom that'll walk away with it. Bloom trying to move the puck ahead, but Lieback will actually pick his pocket. And he'll be sent along the near side and into the retriever zone. Nick Yost back there to chase. He's being shadowed there by Piravano. Piravano takes him to the boards, but the pass was already made as the Retrievers send it out to the blue line. And finally out. Dan Durante along the near side, 25 seconds to play. Leaving it there for O'Connor. O'Connor looking with a side angle shot, and Fede, he's really good on that glove. He's, um, he's proven that to us this evening with 21.1 seconds left. Red Hawks up two or two goals, six to four. That's not a bad play by the OC. He'd like to have it into his pad, see if he can get a rebound to kick out front. But uh, a little too high, able to snag it up. No rebound available for Durante or Bloom. Uh, but offensive zone faceoff, never a bad play to get puck on that. Yep. Rapidly putting it deep behind the goal line. O'Connor can't get there first. His person was there, or be, I believe Philpott, I beg your pardon, was 
the player that was there first and a home run pass or actually a, I'm sorry a breakaway pass for Redmond too far out of his reach as there's five seconds left here in the second frame and a high pass through center does not connect with O'Connor and Dan Durante gets checked to the boards as time's time just expired as he's looking for OC to go to the net but unfortunately that's how this second period will end six to four Red Hawks in the lead So 24 to 22 in shots. 24 in favor of the Red Hawks. So we'll have to wait and see what the Retrievers pull out of their pockets for the last 20 minutes of play in this one as they don't want to go down split in the weekend. They want two wins on homecoming weekend. So stay tuned for the conclusion of this game here on CrossIceFeed.com. Everybody to the Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland, home of the UMBC Retrievers, who are currently down 6-4 to four to the visiting Montclair State University Red Hawks. Play out of the Floyd Ice Arena. The Floyd. That's a, that's a great name. I wonder who it's named after. I'm willing to bet it's a guy named Floyd. All right, so away we go. And it's the Retrievers that'll put one right on the fade. Eh? And Fede will make the save, and Retrievers will try to keep it in there. They don't, as the Red Hawks will clear it out over to the near side, and back to chase it is Devlin. Colin Devlin. They're trying to work his way around. Highlands Ranch, Colorado native. Setting it up for Thomas Nering. And Nering has it picked off, and it'll be played back over to Thomas Lindquist. Played up through center, and it'll be Tempsick losing control of it. And he'll send it back instead just to have these guys make their quick change here with 40 seconds into this third period. Retrievers are trying to regain their footing here after a 3-2 win last night as Yost gets chopped up a little bit there, and he has to chase it back into the near corner, back over to Devlin over to the far corner. Through center, and nobody there to pick it up. As this one goes past everybody, they're going to wave off the icing. I'm going to say Devereaux was in the vicinity of that puck as he has to take it back behind the goal line and off of the far corner of his own zone. Along the half boards, Lieback putting it ahead. All right, it'll be picked up by Rafferty. Rafferty trying to clear it around Lieback. Lieback coming and taking a shot, saved by Drago. That one point blank. A chance there, Rafferty back checking. And Lieback will get it again along his backhand, trying to feed it over to Inglis, but Inglis couldn't take a shot. And Dan Durante will find it, and he'll send it up through center. And pinching into play is Rafferty. Rafferty doing a little hop step. Couldn't get the puck ahead. <laughs> and it'll be the Red Hawks coming back the other way. Inglis walking and taking a shot, hits the glass and goes wide of Drago. Up top at the blue line, and it's ruling, ruling it a delayed offside here as O'Connor will take it out through neutral. Up along the far boards, and it'll be chipped in by Dan Durante. And back behind the goal line, behind the Red Hawks goal. And then smushed into the boards by Hayden. And Retriever's trying to find it and free it. And Durante trying to move it around. O'Connor going down low to support. Durante will find it and send it over to O'Connor along the half boards near side. Back down to Durante. Dan Durante trying to move it down low. And comes up top to the point. Andrew Nering putting it right back down to that corner. And Nering will pinch in. Andrew Nering coming into the slot trying to take a shot, but it goes high into the far corner. Nering still pinching down low. And Rafferty down there moving along the half boards. Looks like O'Connor's going to come back up top to support. He keeps it in at the blue line tightly and puts it into the slot. But Red Hawks will find it and send it out through center, but it'll be picked up by Rafferty at the red line. Coming along the far side, across the blue line in the Red Hawks zone to Dan Durante. Through to the slot for a backdoor chance. Back to the slot, and Bloom could not get his stick on that one. So went outside of his wheelhouse. A point shot taken, goes wide. Red, red Hawks being trapped inside their zone at the moment. But finally, they'll squeeze it out at the blue line. A lot of traffic up there at the front of their bench, but the Retrievers are going to hop right back in for just a moment, though. The Red Hawks will have an opportunity now to break it out into the neutral zone. Playing it right in on Drago, who steers that one aside with his blocker off of the far corner. And moving with it is Sean Mertens for the Red Hawks. He has his pocket picked by Fritz. It's along the half boards near side, leading it up along the wing for Fadler. Fadler through center, trying to hook up there with Panic, but goes out of his reach, and the Red Hawks are going to dump it right back in to the Retrievers zone. Yost over to Fadler. Fadler along the left wing. Trying to move it through center. And he's got his pocket picked as a lot of pickpocketers are out there. And nobody can hold on to the puck for more than maybe 10 seconds. Comes up along the near side with a shot teed up by Manning. Blocked by Fadler. Comes off into the near corner. Kill. Putting it around the horn. Over to the far half boards. O'Connor with a backhand try. Or I'm sorry, that's Hannock. Backhands it out through center for 
Fritz. We're going to have a delayed call coming up here to the Red Hawks as Fadler is lackadaisically puts it off along the half boards near side inside the Red, Hook. Red Hawks zone. Blah. Red Hawks tag it up and we'll get a green turtle power play. Green turtle. Go to two restaurant drive. Restaurant park drive, I believe. And check them out at Owings Mills. Go ahead, Hoppy. What you got? UMBC two for four on the power play today. Uh, their two goals, however, went on two-minute opportunities, such as right now, while the two non-conversions were abbreviated. So we'll see what they can do with another two-minute opportunity in front of them. So it's up along the point now to Bloom. Bloom looking for the opportunity. Down low to Yost with a side angle shot, and it goes right into the breadbasket of Joseph Fadig. Once again, we remind you that next weekend, though, these same UMBC Retrievers will take on the University of Maryland in a home-and-home -home series. Check that out here at the Reisterstown Sportsplex. That'll be game one will be here, and game two will be down in Laurel. Other way around. Is it the other way around? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so they start in Laurel, and they come back up here. <laughs> That's why I have you, sir. That's why I have you prevent me from delivering bad information. Lieback right down to Drago. 135 left on the Green Turtle power play and Lieback will not take that one line back and he'll hit O'Connor into the boards behind Drago. The Retrievers will still lead it up ahead for Yost. Yost trying to backhand it deep but it's trapped up along the blue line and Lieback doing a fine job on his penalty kill for the Red Hawks. Clear it down to Drago. With a minute and 15 left on the man advantage. Yost up at the Red Hawks blue line, dumps it in and it goes off in the far corner. Over to Dan Durante. Durante up against it was Phil Pot. Phil Pot still crunching him along the boards. Durante will truck on. Maybe over to O'Connor. Back in that far corner up top. Nick Yost at the point. Back to O'Connor. O'Connor feeding it down for a backdoor slam home, but unfortunately the Red Hawks read that one well, and they'll clear it down the length of the ice with 50 seconds left on the Green Turtle power play. Now Redmond will be the guy that will a little pressure here along with Preziosi for the Red Hawks, but Jean-Luc will take it through for the Retrievers inside the Red Hawks zone. And Fadler putting it deep, trying to hook up with O'Connor. Instead, it'll be picked up by Tyler Novielli and dropped off for O'Connor. Back over to the near side. Back back over here to O'Connor. A little back and forth up top. And Novielli comes in, takes a shot up front, the rebound is saved by Fede, made initially, but the rebound went off the far side of the net and back with 10 seconds left on the man advantage. Novielli near hash marks, along the half boards, with a shot from the opposite side by Tracy, and gloved down by Fede, but the rebound went off in the corner. Clearing attempt, foiled by Tracy up at the blue line. Tracy, a little deep, moving in, taking a shot, and he's and a save by Fede, oh my goodness! What a great glove save as he got that one snagged out of the air high. Tracy came bolting in on him from point blank. Did his little best Patrick Waugh impression with the flash of the leather. I don't know if that was completely necessary, but every goalie likes to do it. It looked good. <laughs> Did look good. It, I was stunned by it. I'm like, wait, did he just say that? <laughs> it was a little over the top, but it, he's got a great glove. <laughs> the Hawks will lead it out through center now. And shooting the puck right down deep for Drago. Drago stopping it with his black and yellow Sherwood. Getting around Aaron, Andrew Nearing. That is a nice twig he's got there, I might say. And Nearing will send it over into the Red Hawks bench and beyond. My eyes aren't playing tricks on me. That is a black and yellow Sherwood stick, is it not? Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Nice find. Nice find. Former yeah. property of uh, former UMBC goaltender Brian Mersman. Oh, Mersman, if you're tuning in out there, how you doing, buddy? Man, he's Mr. Around the World. He spent uh, the entire summer over there in Europe. He's a traveling man. And now he's taking eight classes, which oh, uh, goodness. makes him unable to really commit to playing <laughs> yeah. this semester. It's hard to commit when you're in class all day and night, uh, especially with these 6 a.m. practices these guys do. Six or five? Six. And here comes a chance now walking in. Drago making a kick shave. Off the stick of Mertens. He came in along the near side. Pass ahead there for Fadler out of his reach. Red Hawks putting in deep. Andrew Nearing. Surrendering pass there for Alec Hannock, but he could not reach for it. And this Red Hawks will pick it up at their blue line in front of their bench. Along the far side, nobody there to pick it up for the Hawks. Andrew Nearing having trouble with that puck as it comes back to Colin Devlin. Devlin. 
Looking to make some moves here as he's set up behind Drago. Drago directing traffic. He was calling for O'Connor to step in a little bit there. And the errant pass picked up by the Hawks, cleared right into the retriever zone. Along the near corner, Devlin being chased by two Hawks. He gets bumped a little bit there as the Hawks have possession of it now. The tight end along the near corner. Devlin being supported there by OC. OC trying to move it along, but it's pinched back over to Devlin. Devlin with a backhand through the air, off the glove and off the head of a Hawks player. They're just going to wave off whatever they wanted to call there. I don't know if it would have really warranted a hand pass, but regardless, it comes back into the retriever zone at the top of their blue line, but it will be cleared in by Matt Bloom with 12-10 to play here in the third. I should plug in the score here. 6-4 Red Hawks. It's been a while since I said the score. I do apologize for that. Red Hawks will break it out into the neutral zone along the near wing. And stepping in with it. Preziosi with a shot and a save there. The rebound. Oh, fortunately, Drago kicked that one away, but in the process, he kicks off the net and we'll have a stoppage. Preziosi looking to stuff at home short side, but Drago had that pat out just in the nick of time. 11.54 left here in the third. The Red Hawks really testing the metal of these dogs, and now they're doing a fine job of it as they have the two-goal lead. And a shot that goes wide off in the far corner up along the half boards. Dan Durante putting it up into the glass and out. Gloved down by Philpot. Trying to work it in are the retrievers who are just a little offside right now. Dan Durante now has it. Up in the slot in the far circle, O'Connor trying to find it. Along the backhand, trying to find someone in the slot there and looked like the intended target. I believe that was Matt Bloom, but he was out of the vicinity with a backhand shot here taken by Preziosi. Man, he is all over the place out there and he's really effective for this Red Hawks team. And Bloom going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Preziosi. Preziosi looks a little gassed right now. He may be going off on a change in a moment as Bloom will put it right in on Fede and Fede will hold on. And suspected Preziosi does go off the ice. 11-11 left here in the third period. Dogs are running out of time to draw even in this one. I'd like to remind everybody, and you can check out us on the web at crossicefeed.com if you're not already here watching this game live. Check us out on Facebook. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. You know you like us. Cross Ice Feed page for those of you on the Facebook. we got a delayed call coming up here, and... Uh, well, the Red Hawks had possession of the puck, and I mean, I have to assume that they're getting it for interference. Another big chance for UMBC about halfway done with this third period. You'd like to uh, cut this lead down to one as soon as possible, and then get working on the second one. You can't score two goals at once. It'd be nice, but yeah. no, no two-point shots in ice hockey, just a roller. You know, some leagues do have that. No. Really? I'm not sure which leagues they are, but... Oh, wait, that's lacrosse. Way outside that circle, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, the alternate captain, Robert Hayden, sits for two, and that gives the Retrievers their sixth Green Turtle power play. Green Turtle. Check them out at Owings Mills, the official sponsor of the UMBC Retrievers. And it comes all the way down to Drago. Drago has to put some effort into that one. He slams his body into the boards to prevent that one from going by, and he just got a, a little bit of a tap there from Cody Inglis. And that was something that Coach Vogelai pointed out about him being aggressive on Drago. Red Hawks looking for an opportunity here, shorthanded. Coming back the other way with Inglis. Inglis coming in on goal. With a backhand pass to Lieback, who comes and takes a shot. Great pass saved by Drago. A shorthanded two on one. Now trying to kick it along. Zach Tracy trying to move it ahead there for Fadler. Fadler working with Rafferty, but maybe Fadler will take it along the far wing. Ten minutes to go here in the third. 57 seconds left on a man advantage. The shot goes wide, picked up down low. And set up top to the point to Yost. Yost winding up, pulls the trigger, and it gets deflected off into the far corner. Red Hawks will find it, sending it up to the blue line and just out. Not far enough down the ice for a clear, but 40 seconds left on the Green Turtle power play for your retrievers. And this is kind of like one of those moments where they need to get one. I mean, they've already had two in this game. This being their sixth try, they, you know, they're going to need this one to go three for six. And here comes all oh, this chance there for Yost to bury it home, but he couldn't take the shot as he was going backwards in on that one. 20 seconds to go here, and maybe time for one last rush with a nice back pass by Bloom over to O'Connor. O'Connor across the line, snapping it down low over the half boards near side to Durante. Dan Durante down low, gets a return pass along the near circle, working with it. O'Connor 
O'Connor looking for options, and we're back to five-a-side hockey with nine minutes to go. Dan Durante trying to get some support from O'Connor as this one's sent up along the half boards, and the Red Hawks will break out. Two on one. Redmond with a shot that just goes wide, just barely wide. Well, it misses everybody, and Preziosi was the other man on that attack. O'Connor dropping it off for Dan Durante, far side. Durante with a shot, and it goes off the blocker of Fede, but the rebound left there juicy. Does come out to the Red Hawks, and coming across the line is Preziosi. Getting a return pass with a shot, and a save by Drago again. Redmond trying to pick it up behind the retriever's goal. Comes over to the near side, and a shot taken there by Hayden. It's not make its way on goal, and will be cleared down the length of the ice. No icing against the retrievers, as it'll be picked up by Hayden back in his own end. 8-10 to go here in the third. 6-4, Red Hawks. Caught up at the red line, DJ Fadler. And he's doing a little poke check in there, and it looked like Preziosi was not too pleased about that offside call, and he shoots the puck into the glass right in front of our broadcasting area. 8-04 remains here in the third. We do remind everybody that we also broadcast Potomac Patriots hockey games, the Eastern Junior Hockey League South and Empire Hockey Team, so check us out. Check out our broadcast schedule at crossicefeed.com slash ustream. Red Hawks taking a shot along the far side of the net. And as Bill Chuck took that shot, and then Rafferty will find it, leading it out up along the left wing for DJ Fadler. Fadler trying to cut his way to the net, and a backhand shot that goes wide, goes back behind the goal line, trying to chase it down. And he'll have Hannock support him down low. As the Red Hawks will find it back behind the goal line with Hayden. Up along the far side, and a nice diving effort there. Who's that, John Luke, or no, that was Brandon Fritz, I beg your pardon. And made a nice diving effort, but Hannock will find it up at the red line, clear it right back in the Red Hawks zone with 7.20 to play in the third. And they need a couple of goals to draw, even in this one. Last night, of course, they had to win 3-2 against Virginia Tech Hokies. Retrievers looking to go 2-0 this weekend instead of 1-1. Backhand shot by Tracy to the front. Fady the sieve. He's down on his belly, and he'll find it under him. Nick Yost got his hands on his head up here at the blue line. He can't, he can't believe what he just saw. Fady was down. It was perfect opportunity to lift it up and over him, but nobody was there to sh shovel it home. That's not a... Uh, Opportunity you, or you expect Tyler Novielli to miss. Uh, one of the better shooters on the team. Uh, great job by Fede getting down and taking away the lower part of the net. Novielli unable to elevate the puck where he had the rest of the 4x6 cage awaiting him. Now controlling at the retrievers inside the Red Hawk zone. And along the near circle, Novielli trying to take a side angle shot through that near circle, but it's deflected wide. Yost with it along the far blue line, working his way down low. He's a really aggressive puck moving defenseman. He's off in the near corner now, encircling the entire zone. And Tracy bringing it off in the far corner. And with it, Thomas Nering trying to find an opportunity with it, but the Red Hawks will find that puck and fly back. We'll set up the pass there for Piravino. Piravino walking his way into the slot inside the retriever zone, loses control of the puck, and trying to steer it away from him. Inglis trying to move the puck away from Devlin. Devlin still with it, and he'll retreat back deep inside of his own zone to regroup as a couple of changes are made by the Red Hawks. Novielli couldn't receive that pass. It was out of his range, and Devlin ices the puck with 6-11 left here in the third. Time is running out on the dogs. It's been a good period by the dogs. A lot of pressure down the Montclair end. That might just be Montclair trying to shore up their own end before trying to go down and score a few more goals. But UMBC putting pressure on, getting their opportunities, and uh, hopefully they can finally put one through here. Fluttering shot from the point from Colin Trevers. Goes right in on Drago, and he holds on with no rebound coming. 6.08 to play here in the third. These guys get set to play a two-game series next weekend, home and home against the University of Maryland Terrapins. I don't know, what do you call that, the 95 series or something? I mean, you're up on a 795 up here in Reiserstown. I don't know. Battle of the Beltways. Battle of the Beltways. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. They are the lower Beltway in Laurel, and you're the upper Beltway up here in Baltimore, and they're, they're more D.C.-oriented. This one comes in a slot and a save by Fede. I don't know how that one found its way through. I think Bloom actually got that shot off. Goes off to the far corner. Red Hawks trying to find a way to slow things down and set it up along the far boards and out. And it is deflected through by Brandon Person and goes all the way back to the Retriever's blue line. Brady Keel will pick it up. Bring it along the near side. Over 
to Rafferty, back over to Keel, back over to Rafferty, playing a little catch back in their own zone with 5.25 to go. Rafferty, a little poke there and a little bit of a reach by Tempsick. And he went diving down to that, and the Red Hawks control it now in the neutral zone. <coughs> and it'll be Bloom that'll pick it up back in his own zone, far half boards, looking for some options here as he moves the puck along. And he'll shovel that one right in to the glove of Fede, who will play it off behind the net. Leaving it there for Manning. And it'll be kept in by the Retrievers along the far half boards. Set up down low, looking for the return pass. O'Connor up front, but he won't get it. Comes up to Yost. Yost winds up, takes his shot. It's deflected wide. So we have a delayed call coming up against the Red Hawks. And Retrievers still controlling it here. Looking to get the extra attacker out there, but the Red Hawks will tag the puck in. We'll get the stoppage. Another Green Turtle power play with 4.42 left here in the third. Green Turtle at 2 Restaurant Park Drive, the official power play sponsor for your UMBC Retrievers. So this will be a seventh go at it. They already have two power play goals on the night. And UMBC is going to exercise their timeout usage here appropriately. Well, they just had the or majority of the first power play unit out for that last shift. Uh, yeah, rest, rest the boys up. up try yep. and get them back out there. That's the obviously your first power play unit you went out there to try and get this game back down to one goal and then work in from there. Now, hopefully this game will be over in time for The Walking Dead. It premieres tonight. Is that a new season starting up, right? Oh, yeah. I yeah. love that show. <laughs> AMC, in case you didn't know. Watch it. Oh, you got some. Now my Buffalo Bills have just defeated the Arizona Cardinals 19-16. I love this game. There and goes my game. Eliminator Challenge. <laughs> Are you done? You picked the cards over the Bills? Well, I was already like two well, for four on, on the you. year. Shame of course I picked the you. Cardinals over the Bills. It's the Bills. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I get it all the time. <laughs> Well, the Retrievers, they're in a bit of an underdog uh, situation right now. Pun intended, they're down by two. As the Red Hawks are playing some serious hockey. They came ready to play. Last night, I believe they played uh, Central Connecticut. In, Friday night. They played Friday night against Central Connecticut. Uh, how did they uh, end up in that one there? They won that game 5-4, 4-3, something along that line okay. in overtime. Okay. And the Redskins beat the Vikings. 38-26 to 26 is the final score on that one. Now, we got a hockey game to finish up here with 4.40 to go as the Green Turtle power play commences. And let's see if they can go three for seven. And with it, O'Connor back down low. Looking for someone up front to give it to. Yossi down there to support. Back over to OC along the near side. Back behind the net with a wraparound attempt, and it comes down to the slot. A nice pinching effort there by Yost to keep it in. The Red Hawks looking to clear it, but Lyback trying to move his way around there with Hayden along the near side. And O'Connor down low with a stuff up front, and Fede made the save as he kept it tight along the post. With a shot, he scores! Matt Bloom pops it home on a green turtle power play. They go three for seven, and they're only down by one with 4.07 left here in the third. There is still hope. I know it's his second goal of the game. We were just going to get to that. <laughs> Let the man talk for a this bit. Supporting cast. I know I talk too much. Yeah. Well, that was a good power play by UMBC, working the puck to the net, eventually working his way back out to Bloom. Uh, Fetty never saw it, never really had a chance. You, we had a great view down here seeing the shot released and just a wide open top blocker hand corner there for UMBC. Here comes another chance if Fede will find it. The Retrievers try to stuff it along the far side of the goal with 3.54 to play here in the third. Matt Bloom getting two goals in this game. Did he have the previous power play goal as well? Did he have a, uh, one of the two? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to look back and see. Step boy, where are you? <laughs> I'm working on it. Well, regardless, play resumes. As it comes all the way down to the retriever zone, no icing. Yost back there to play it. Trying to get it around Tempsick. And Yost gets upended by Tempsick. And the puck goes back into the Red Hawks zone, but the Red Hawks are there to retrieve it. No pun intended. Now, Zach Tracy back in his own zone with a backhand feed out into the neutral zone. And it'll be picked up by Person. He brings it back into his own zone and waiting for it there was Lindquist. Lindquist being shadowed by Tracy. Tracy couldn't get him to surrender to the puck, but he does get the pass off over to the near side, and it was Manning, but Manning will go off on a change as he puts it over to Lindquist. And Lieback trying to find the puck. A chance now, Piravino 
working with Lieback out there. Almost had an opportunity there. And the Red Hawks will tag up as they put it deep down to Drago with three minutes to play here in the third. 6-5, Red Hawks. The Retrievers still hanging on in this one. Looking to get the equalizer. Bloom just got the third power play goal in this game out of seven opportunities. And it comes over to Dan Durante with a shot. It just goes over the head of Fede. He kind of froze. He didn't exactly know where that one got deflected to. The Retriever's still keeping it active. No, Lieback will find it in the high slot, and he'll send it out into the neutral zone along the near wing. And with it now, it's Inglis with a shot. And it goes out of play, and we'll get a stoppage with 2.32 to go here in the third period. Quite an exciting game in this one. We got 11 goals, and uh, let's see, about two years ago it was 9 to 3, so we're almost uh, we're almost up at that point where we got 12 goals in this game. Definitely didn't turn out to that uh, into that two nothing game that Coach and I had talked about in the pregame. That's for sure. One back to Drago. Drago, leaving there. Andrew Naring. Naring had it picked off at long half boards by a bunch of a shot that just goes wide and off into the far corner up top to the far blue line, kept in by the Hawks. Time is running out, 2.20 to play. Andrew Naring along the near side. O'Connor with a backhand pass through center, finds Dan Durante, but at the same time, Redmond came along and interrupted it, and it'll be sent down by the Red Hawks into the retriever zone for an icing with 2.11 to play here in the third. And that was Matt Boom's first goal of the game. Oh, it was his first goal of the game. Okay, I beg your pardon. We had goals by Naring, Novielli, O'Connor, and Tracy. My wife lied to me. Novielli <laughs> and... I believe O'Connor's were on the power play. Okay. Well, Bloom and Novielli, they're about the same height, right? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> eh. That's all right. There's 11 goals in this game. It's almost turning into a basketball game, if you will, where it's like you don't remember one goal from another. Thomas Herring with a shot that gets deflected off into the near corner. And the Retrievers trying to pop it home and equalizer here. We'll keep an eye on Johnny Drago here as we have 145 to play here in the third. Retrievers need a goal to tie. And Devlin puts it into the Red Hawks zone. And back there to chase is Phil Pot. Phil Pot with it off in the far corner of his own zone. Up along the far side. Trying to hook up on a pass there with Pre Preziosi. And it goes down to Drago. No icing with 1.28 to play. Through center over to Novielli. Novielli across the blue line, far side. Down low to the far corner. Picked up by Phil Pot. Phil Pot sending it around the world over to the near side. Not out. Kept in by the Dogs. And it'll be freed by the Hawks up to the neutral zone. And coming back the other way is Lindquist with a shot and a blocker saved by Drago. The rebound. Another chance they score. Shot taken by Brandon Person on the on a rebound. Makes it 7-5 Red Hawks with 106 left here in the third. Oh, my goodness. That's another unfortunate bounce for Johnny. Uh, the first shot came in, caught him up in the shoulder. Didn't quite know where the rebound was going. Popped right up. It looked like the second shot was deflected. A little bit of a change up. And uh, floated right over him and in. Off the foot is what we're getting told here? No, off the, off the shin pad. 106 off the left isn't oh. quite impossible. Totally but, missed uh, that, yeah. It went off of, uh, went off of Yosti. Oh, boy. One minute to go. Hey, you got to pull your tender in the right moment here. And the Red Hawks retreating back into their own zone with a pass through center along the far wing. And it's chipped down to the far corner of the retriever zone with 45 seconds to play. Andrew Naring back there to pick it up. Naring moving through the slot. Up through center to O'Connor. O'Connor along the near side wing with a drop pass to Dan Durante. Durante looking for some options. Backhands it to the front and almost had Andrew Naring there to pop it home back door. Up top, Rafferty down low with a shot there by Blumick just goes wide. He gets deflected off behind the net. 20 seconds to go here in the third. Red Hawks will find it and they'll send it down the length of the ice. This one's going to go all the way down to Drago. No, it's not. It's actually going to slow up a lot of that ice, chopped up, and that's going to do it. 10 seconds left here in the third. One last rush from Rafferty. <coughs> And that's five seconds ago. The Red Hawks chop it away. And then that's your final score, 7-5. to five. The Montclair State University Red Hawks defeat your UMBC Retrievers in a barn burner, 7-5. to five. 12 goals in this game. My goodness. Once again, next weekend, these guys will play a home-and-home -home with the University of Maryland Terrapins. Our next broadcast for the Retrievers will be October 27th, and they take on the Delaware Blue Hens. And you can also catch that here at the cross-ice feed. 
The seven goals by Johnny Drago is only the second time that I believe he's let up more than five in a game. Uh, it's one other time they played Navy. Navy, he got scored on eight times, but definitely not with this low of a shot count. UMBC will look next weekend for Drago to rebound, come out and be his normal self. Uh, obviously not the result that they wanted, but UMBC showed a lot of heart here in the third. Uh, battling back, a couple bad bounces, a goal that probably changed the momentum of the game that we looked at and shouldn't have counted, but you can't dwell on things that you can't control, such as refereeing. Uh, UMBC just got to get back to work, keep plugging away, do the dirty little things that get you goals and wins. Well, with that being said, we're going to close out the broadcast. Once again, Montclair State University defeats your UMBC Retrievers with a final score of 7-5. to five. For Sean Hoppy and Hunter Nicolette, I'm David Stern saying good night, everybody, and as always, don't stop believing.